In this video, we're going to discuss things that affect the retained earnings account. Or if the firm doesn't have any retained earnings, this would also apply to the accumulated deficit account. Because accumulated deficit is just what we call retained earnings when it has a debit balance. So the three most important things that are going to affect retained earnings are net income, net loss, and dividends. So net income, which just occurs when the firm has more revenues than expenses, is going to be added to, it's going to be added, this is a plus sign here, this is going to be added to the retained earnings account. A net loss, on the other hand, is going to be subtracted from retained earnings. It's going to make retained earnings lower. Now, if the firm issues certain types of dividends, that is going to reduce the retained earnings account as well. For example, if the firm pays cash dividends to its shareholders, what it's doing is saying, look, we're not retaining earnings, we're giving them back. We're giving back earnings to our shareholders. In that case, then the retained earnings account is going to go down. And it's also going to go down if you have script dividends. And script dividends are basically when you have a promise to pay. It's, it's like an IOU for dividends. And say you will pay dividends at some point in the future. And then also property dividends will reduce retained earnings. So let's say it's a winery and they give out a bottle of wine. That will reduce uh, retained earnings. And stock dividends as well. Whether it's a large stock dividend or a small stock dividend will reduce the retained earnings account. Now, Prior period adjustments, such as if there's an error in the financial statements, let's say there was a mathematical mistake or an oversight of some kind, uh, the prior period adjustments, what you're going to do is you're going to adjust the beginning balance of retained earnings for the current period. And it could be adjusted up or down based on the nature of the mistake. Also, certain changes in accounting principle, let's say you go from FIFO to LIFO, or you go, if you're a construction company, you go from the completed contract method to the percentage of completion method, then what you're going to do is you're going to show the cumulative effect on retained earnings as of the beginning of the earliest period presented in the financial statements. So let's say the financial statements had the years 2023, 2024, in 2025, you're going to have to show the cumulative effect as of the earliest period. You're going to have to go all the way back to 2023. And so in these, based on the nature of the change, it could make retained earnings go up or down. Now, if the firm has a quasi-reorganization, which you might not be familiar with, that can also increase retained earnings. And, and I'll just tell you briefly, a quasi-reorganization is what happens when the firm has an accumulated deficit and they want to get rid of it. They want to get rid of this accumulated deficit, and they can do that. They can basically have this transfer with the paid-in capital account, or they can revalue their assets to fair value, their, their, their assets and their liabilities to fair value. Uh, and they're basically going to get the retained earnings account to zero and, and get rid of this deficit. The firm might be doing it because they want to issue dividends, and maybe in that state it's illegal to do so if you have an accumulated deficit. Or maybe the firm just wants to be more respectable, but long story short, they do the quasi-reorganization and it's going to increase their retained earnings. Also, if a firm does treasury has a treasury stock transaction where they sell the treasury stock for below cost, right? If they have a situation where they sell for below cost, remember, we're never going to have a gain or loss on a firm dealing in its own stock, right? So there's never going to be a gain or loss whether the firm sells treasury stock for more or less than what it paid for it, right? So remember, treasury stocks when a firm buys back its own stock. So let me give an example where a firm buys it, buys back or sells its uh, treasury stock for below cost, and I want to show you how it'll affect retained earnings. So let's say the firm had treasury stock, they had repurchased it, and it was on the books for seventeen thousand dollars, and they decide to sell it. And they sell it for cash of $6,000. And so you might think, hey, there's an $11,000 loss here. But remember, no gain or loss on a treasury stock transaction. Okay, So what's first going to happen is first you're going to go to the paid-in capital account for treasury stock. And you're going to draw that down until it gets to zero. And let's say that the balance in the paid-in capital treasury stock was 2000 so you debit that for 2000 but then now there's no more paid in capital left in treasury stock so the plug the plug to make this entry balance is going to be retained earnings so when you sell a treasury stock for below cost after you've drained down the uh, paid in capital account the remaining balance goes to reduce the retained earnings